Hi everyone, welcome to this LinkedIn Live. How cool is this? I'm excited to be here. So I am the wellbeing manager for Vaco. Um, and today we're gonna really talk about work from home ergonomics. So how is our physical body? Should, how should it be when we're working all day, every day from home? Uh, the, the real goal of this whole LinkedIn Live is that whether you have a whole office um, or if you're using the dining room chair and a laptop, we should be able to get some pretty basic fundamental um, how to have your body during any of the, the following scenarios. So I really hope this is applicable to everyone and I'm happy to be here. So. How are we gonna do this? I'm gonna break this up into two different things. So before, whenever I do any sort of workshop or webinar on this sort of thing, I really like to start with what is the picture perfect scenario, right? Um, we know working from home, it's, it's not, we don't have our fancy chairs and our fancy desks. We have to really get creative. So, but it's nice to know what, what it should be like. Um, and then we can work from there and get creative. So from that, we're going to do picture perfect workplace ergonomics. And then from there, how can we do this at home? Uh, we've been working from home for a month, some more, some less, and you may be feeling some neck stuff, some back stuff, um, some hip flexor stuff. So these will these will be helpful for all of those things. So we can keep prevent any injuries that may happen from just sitting or being in the same position all the time. So we'll start with picture perfect. When we look at our picture perfect you know, workspace. You have a desk, you have a chair. Um, one thing that's really important to just look at when you're looking at the body is that the spine is straight, um, the neck is straight, the shoulders are down and long. If you look at your elbows, your elbows should be 90 degrees to about 110 degrees. So a, maybe a little bit bigger than, than a right angle. And then from there, you'll have 90 degrees with the knees, 90 degrees with the ankles. So a big thing is just 90 degrees throughout the whole body. Uh, when you're looking at your eyes, this is a really big one, especially if you are a laptop person um, like myself. Your eyes should be in line with the top of your screen, the top third of your screen. So what that does is if we, if our screen, if we have a laptop and it's on the, the, the counter, we look down and then our whole spine begins to go as well. If you've done any sports like swimming, right, they always say to look up um, because if you look down, you'll sink. Uh, so eyes are up and that'll keep your spine nice and straight and uh, healthy. The other thing that, that tends to go unnoticed when we're looking at the picture perfect workspace um, is your feet. Your feet should always be supported. Usually there's a platform, um, usually there's something to keep your feet supported so your knees don't get too much um, hang time and you're also on that nice 90 degree angle as well. So why is this hard to do at home? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, maybe we don't have a monitor, maybe we do, but if we don't, that definitely makes it hard for the screen. Maybe we don't have an office chair or maybe we're using a dining room chair or a stool. We may not have a desk. We may not have an adjustable keyboard. Uh, we may not have a footrest. There's tons of things we may not have to have healthy ergonomics. Luckily, there's lots of creative solutions that we can do uh, so we can be as comfortable as possible and also maintain our health and well-being. So, we're going to move through how we can do this at home, creative ways. We have three different places we're going to look at. So the first one is the screen. Uh, the second one is the seat. And the third one is your body positioning. So of course, the first two help the third one, which is body positioning. But there's a, a, some additional things. If you have your whole if you have your whole space set up perfectly, you can still be in the wrong body position. So we want, we want to go through that as well. So we'll start with screen, and we talked about this a little bit already, but the goal here is if you're looking straight forward, your eyes should be in line with the top third of your screen. 
If you have a laptop um, and you don't have a monitor, one thing that could be helpful is if you have a TV, you can hook it up to an HDMI cord and then that can be your monitor if you have access to that. Um, I know I don't, so, but I, someone said that and I was like, dang, that's a, that's a great idea. So um, using a TV as a monitor can really help elongate your neck, spine, um, and all of those things. Now, if you have a laptop, you don't have access to a monitor, how can we keep the screen height in a comfortable, safe, healthy place for the rest of our spine? So there's, there's a couple ways we can do it. The, the first way is when you have a, a reading heavy task or a presentation heavy task, like this one for me, right? Uh, prop your laptop up. You can prop it up on some books. I have it propped up on a puzzle box. I don't know if you've all been do, making puzzles. I know I have. Um, but you can prop it up. So then your my spine is much easier to stay straight, whereas if it would be low, it would be so easy for me to begin to sink down. Um, reading heavy task, prop up your laptop. If you have a typing heavy task, you'll have to lower your laptop. So when your laptop is lowered, your screen is obviously not in the right position, especially with your eyes. What I would try to do is keep your neck tall, keep your spine tall, and try to just look with your eyes. Uh, this, is, this is a really tricky one because if you just look with your eyes, obviously over after 10, 15 minutes, you'll slowly begin to droop. So keeping some sort of alarm so it reminds you to straighten up can be really helpful for that one as well. When it comes to any of this, and you'll hear this being a big theme throughout this uh, LinkedIn Live, move. Always alternate between these two positions. The body likes to move. Uh, it's much better to move the body than to try to get the perfect position and stay there all day. Uh, moving is always, always the way we wanna go. So alternate between the two positions. Alternate between reading heavy tasks versus um, typing heavy tasks and et cetera. So next we'll move into our seat. So before we go into seat, of course, you can always stand. Standing is a really, really nice way to elongate your hip flexors from shortening all day. Uh, but we, we're gonna talk about our seat because there are times where sitting is nice. Um, when we look at our seat, we first want to make sure our feet are supported. So whether this is, if your feet are not supported and you'll be, once you start noticing yourself, most of us bend our knees behind the, the chair legs. Um, some of us straighten them out a little bit more. Well, what that does is it really affects how our knees work, how our hips work, how our ankles are even aligned, uh, especially for there after a long time. So with our feet, we want our feet flat on the floor. If they are not touching the floor, uh, or if they're kind of feeling like they're dangling, get a towel, get a couple towels, maybe some books, depending on your leg length, uh, to make sure you have that support. The next one, when it comes to your seat, we have our feet, um, your back, your lower back, lumbar spine should always be supported by the backrest of the chair. Now, if you're using a dining room chair, uh, most dining room chairs don't have lumbar support, and if they do, it's very minimal. So what you can do is you can roll up a towel, maybe a firm pillow, and put it right underneath, right behind your lumbar spine. This will really help uh, that natural curvature of your lower back um, and keeping your spine nice and straight. So play with, play with different props that you can use to really keep that nice and supported. When you're looking at your seat height, you want it so your knees are 90 degrees to 110 um, and your hips are also 90 degrees to 110. Um, and then the back of the, the these are your knees. Um, the back of the chair is just a couple inches behind your, your knees. So that, that's the seat. Um, if you want, if, we're, if you're in a pretty uncomfortable dining room chair, uh, some things that you can try for comfort that actually I think you know, go a long way, surprisingly, putting a thin pillow underneath your seat. Uh, this can really help first prop you up a little bit um, 
which is nice. And it can also provide that cushion. You can also drape a soft towel, maybe a blanket along the back of your chair. So it, it has just a little bit more plushiness uh, comfort to your seat. If you ever get uncomfortable, uh, one thing that's really important to do is to move. Um, like I said before, moving is everything. And especially being at home all the time, I'm sure we're, we notice just how important it is to keep moving all the time. All right, so now we'll move into the body positioning, which is our last, um, last realm here. When we, I wanna talk more about standing. So you can sit and we've gone over our seat. Our seat. Um, you can also stand. So some good ideas on, on where to stand in your house. You can be up on an ottoman type thing. That's, I think that's what this is called. That's what I'm on right now. Um, you can be on the kitchen counter. Uh, you can even be on a dresser. I've seen, I've tried working on a dresser as well. Uh, if you have a dining room table, you can always put boxes on the dining room table and work from there as well. But standing is a really great way to move positions to elongate your, your hip flexors um, and to expend more energy just as you work. That can be a really nice way to do it. Um, Sitting is also there, so sit and stand, alternate between both of those. You can also alternate to in other positions, sitting on the floor for a little bit um, with a cushion, um, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but getting your body in different positions can be helpful for, for our overall health. Some other things with body positioning. Uh, shoulders are relaxed down your back, and you can tell even, Every time I say it, I can always relax it just a little bit more. But what happens is we, especially during um, times of, you know, change, uh, we can really start bringing up our shoulders and stressing. This is where we, we hold a lot of our stress. And by releasing our shoulders down our back, we're releasing a lot of that uh, pressure that can lead to stress headaches, that can lead to scar tissue that, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night with severe neck pain, that sort of thing. So keeping your shoulders down is huge. Keeping your shoulders relaxed. The other thing that is really can be difficult at um, a dining room table or um, another table that you're using is your elbows. So to get your elbows at 90 degrees, the, the table tends to need to be a little bit lower than what we use to eat off of. Uh, what happens then is if we are just typing at our normal table, our elbows tend to be, you know, just a little bit, a little bit lower, less than 90 degrees. How we can help, help with this is prop yourself up. You can prop yourself up on those pillows, maybe multiple pillows. Uh, you can also always make sure your feet are also supported. But what happens there is instead of you're trying to get your elbows 90 degrees, so you're lifting your shoulders up, um, you can keep your shoulders down and your elbows at 90 degrees. So your wrists are nice and healthy. Uh, feet are supported, like I said. So if you lift up your seat, make sure you also lift up your foot support as well. And then the last one is spine is straight. Um, your spine is super straight, including your neck the whole time. Uh, this can be difficult, especially if you're really into a task or something you're working on. It's really easy to start lowering, lowering your spine, uh, which brings me to my next point. And this moves a little bit deeper into body positioning. So even if we had the perfect position uh, we all know if we stay in that position for hours on end, our body's still not going to like us, right? Our bodies are meant to move. We're meant to be dynamic. We're meant to um, move in all different types of directions. So throughout the day, move. Move as much as you can. Um, you can sit. You can stand. You can walk. You can stretch. Um, any type of changing of the posture is huge for, for your physical health. To do this, something that I've been doing that is actually a productivity technique, but I find it super helpful for ergonomics as well, 
It's called the Pomodoro Technique. So for those of you who have never heard of it, you're in for a treat. It's awesome. Uh, basically what it is, it is you, they, it's basically a theory that humans can't hold their attention for over 25 minutes. There's many different times and theories out there on how long we can, but this one is 25 minutes. So what you do is you set a timer for 25 minutes. Um, you have your task, you work nonstop, you can't look at anything else, not your phone, not another tab, not another email, until the 25 minutes is up. Once it rings, you get up and you move. Um, you move for three to five minutes. With the Pomodoro technique, it's really important to not be where you're working when you're when you're resting, when you're doing that movement. So you can walk to the other side of the house. Um, you can walk outside if you have a front yard, uh, but really get up and move. What's great about this technique is first off, you're time boxing all of your tasks, all of your time, uh, and you're also moving every 30 minutes. That's pretty amazing. So that's a great, great uh, technique to try out if that's applicable to you. You can also wake up in the morning and plan out, time box your whole day based on the Pomodoro technique. The last part in this is one thing that's another thing that's difficult about working from home is the lack of connection, right? We're we're not around our coworkers all the time um, like we used to be. So when you're doing these pomodoros, when you're trying to figure out your ergonomics, which is going to look different from every for everyone because everyone needs different things, um, include each other. Maybe brainstorm or show people what your workspace looks like. Um, you can always, you know, message someone, hey, want to do a Pomodoro really quick. Uh, that can be really helpful for motivation, productivity, but also connection and that really human feeling that we are lacking from outside of our home. So those are the big, big components of work from home ergonomics. Some kind of things to an overview of what we talked about. The biggest thing is don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, see what you have, get creative. Um, the 90 degree angle on the hips, uh, elbows, knees, and ankles are really important. Move, move throughout the day, change your position. Uh, the Pomodoro technique is an amazing technique to try. You can always use a laptop um, and you can always get in different parts of your houses, of your home to, to work. So see what works best for you. I hope this was helpful. I will keep the, I will look at the questions afterwards so and answer any that are there so please type type in whatever you have and it's been lovely doing this um have a have a great day everyone